Good morning. Working on a 2013 Toyota Corolla today. Going to be diagnosing some evaporative emissions problems. Just looking at these codes, it looks like it's probably the leak detection pump. But we're going to smoke test it anyway, just to make sure there's no leaks. And that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on in this video. So first things first, you always want to check your gas cap. A lot of the times this can be the problem, but I've already checked this one. And it looks fine. So let's go to the engine bay. So this here is our purge valve. This is coming from the canister. And you have this line going into the intake manifold. This line going back to the canister. Most cars will have like a green uh, Schrader valve that you can use as a test port. For whatever reason this one doesn't. So I'm gonna take this line off of the purge valve and send smoke that direction. The way this works is obviously the, the canister stores the vapors and while you're driving down the road the purge valve will open and close and use some of those vapors for the fuel mixture. Alright so here's our smoke machine. This is the setup. We got the vacuum hose or the smoke hose coming into our hose here. I have this battery maintainer, which you don't really need, but our smoke machine draws the battery down so far that it shuts off. So that's why I use that. But first, before we send smoke into this system, we gotta shut the vent shut valve because that's normally open when the car's off. And there's two ways to do that. So underneath the car here, near the rear uh, wheels, this is our canister. This is actually our leak detection pump, which is probably the problem. But uh, here is our vent, and what we're going to do is take this line off and plug it. The other way to do this is to do this with the bidirectional control on the scanner and close this. But I suspect this is not working, so it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to close this with a plug, run smoke through here, see if there's any leaks. Probably not any leaks. And then uh, we'll most likely re recommend this to be replaced. So the way this this works is you gotta spread you gotta spread uh, this side and this side. It's a little bit tricky. I usually use two picks and spread it and then push it off. Sometimes it's a little easier to have a third hand help you out. But now that this is plugged, we're gonna start the smoke machine. And see what we got. So real quick, we got shop air going in here. We got this line going up into the uh, engine bay. And what we're going to do is hit start. And then this number should come down below 0 0.020. So what it's doing right here is it's just filling up the whole system, pressurizing it. And this is almost like a fuel tank pressure sensor built into this machine. And the pressure in air is building up. Oh, so now here we're passing. So if this number was above 20, we would know that we have some kind of leak problem. But it's below 20, so we have no leaks on this system. So if we did have leaks on this system, most likely it would be coming from up there on the rollover valve. That's uh, on the Toyotas, that's what leaks the most. Every now and then you get lines on the canister leaking. But on this one, it's fine. So we can rule out any type of evaporative system leak. And now we can start looking at individual components. I mean, since those codes are pointing towards leak detection pump, which is basically a fancy vent shut valve, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and call it and say that that's the problem. Let's uh, see if we can induce a leak here. Just take this cap off. Yep, there goes the smoke. And the machine is reading full. So it's a big, big leak. So here we'll kind of cap it. And you can see on the machine it's up to 55, 50. If I fully cap it, it's gonna go down again. If I create a small leak. So there you go. That's how I smoke test these. So we're back in the engine bay here, and just a quick note, 
on rare occasions the purge could be stuck open and we could have a leak in that direction but that would usually be associated with like low purge flow codes or purge stuck open or you know the computer usually knows because the engine will run richer if that's stuck open so I don't typically smoke this direction you can if you want to to be uh, complete but we're gonna put this back together and in the next bit of this video if you want to stick around I'm gonna kind of go over how an evaporative emission system works demystified a little bit okay so here's a look at a pretty typical evaporative emission system uh, over here on the left we have the computer which has an input from the FTP sensor and two outputs one goes to the purge control solenoid and the other goes to the vent shut valve so as you see here the vent shut valve is normally open and the purge control is usually closed until the computer decides to open it and release vapors that are stored in the canister into the throttle body to burn as part of the fuel mixture but on this particular vehicle this is the component that was bad uh, the leak detection pump is a fancy vent shut valve and uh, on most Toyotas when they have evaporative emissions leaks like I was mentioning it usually comes from right here in the rollover valve uh, the plastic just cracks and you get small leaks from there but in this vehicle we had no leaks as you saw but typically on these systems what happens you know obviously gasoline evaporates it evaporates at a much faster rate than like water per se and as that evaporates it starts to build up pressure inside the tank that pressure is then moved into the canister here where there's charcoal and the charcoal stores those vapors when the vehicle is ready to use those vapors it closes the vent shut valve here and then opens the purge control which uses the vacuum from the throttle body and uh, that pulls vapors out of the canister into the engine and it then uses that those vapors as part of the fuel mixture so when it's doing that it will reduce the injector pulse and use the uh, vapors here just to make your mixture correct it's a pretty smart little system uh, this is that green cap the service port that I mentioned earlier usually you can uh, unscrew that little Schrader valve or just put your little tool and screw it right on and you can fill this whole thing with smoke you have to cap this or shut this with the computer in order to pressurize the whole system and see if there's any leaks the main reason that the vent solenoid is normally open is that when you go to fill gas at the gas pump that as the fluid goes in you're creating pressure in here and that pressure needs somewhere to go which is usually out through this vent if this is clogged that's going to build up pressure here and back up through the fill and usually shut the pump off because the pump has a built-in pressure sensor as well so you don't overfill your tank and spill fuel everywhere so that's why uh, this is always open and then when the computer shuts this it's usually either to purge vapors back into the intake or to run its tests which are usually done when the vehicle is off so when the vehicle is off the monitored systems starts to run its evaporative emissions tests the vapors start to build up in the tank move into the canister this whole system starts to pressurize your FTP sensor starts to go up read a higher pressure and over time the computer measures if this FTP sensor goes up or down in pressure obviously if it goes down it can sense that there's a leak and at the rate at which it goes down that's how it sense, senses if it's a small medium or large leak so that's basically how this evaporative emission systems works and how those codes are set after the test is performed it will usually open this and it's back to normal so I'm actually recording this a couple weeks later and I'm happy to report that I did change that leak detection pump on the uh, charcoal canister and that did fix the problem so it was a good diagnosis I know I didn't actually test anything in there but I've actually repaired this before with those exact same codes and I just use experience to repair this one 
But in a future video, if I ever do any of those tests, I will for sure record them. So, hey, make sure you subscribe, and thanks for watching.